Welcome to Galvadoc Installation Training. This video will provide you with detailed instructions for the installation and removal of the following list of Galvadoc products. Standard 3.5 foot wide by 8 foot long sections, 7 foot wide by 8 foot long sun deck L section, bench, ladder, and boat bumpers. Also you will see the process of adding a slip along with a covered boathouse. This video will show the proven techniques used to successfully service the Galvadoc system. For areas that are not covered, you will need to refer to the user's guide for more assistance. This truck is loaded with a dock that will be installed 80 feet out along with a 32-foot covered slip, sun deck L section, bench, ladder, and bumpers. This configuration requires a total of 18 decks. All of the components required for this configuration are stacked on this truck with the exception of nine decks and the boathouse vinyl which will have been transported separately. After you have unloaded the components, review your shipping list and check off the items you have received. It is important to separate the various lengths of pipe such as 8 foot and 16 foot framework pipes as well as the 7 foot 4 inch boathouse brace pipes. This way you can keep the required number of frame and brace pipes separate from the vertical pipes to avoid installing the wrong pipes in the wrong place. The steel framework shown here is being assembled in a 16 foot length. This is two 8 foot dock sections. Use the 16 foot framework as much as possible with an even number of sections. For example, an 80 foot straight dock will have five 16 foot frameworks. This will reduce joints and provide you with a straighter and stronger dock. As you slide the 16 foot pipes through the continuous bracket, take notice of the 16 inch sleeve for the vertical pipe and make sure that the set screw on the vertical sleeves are all facing back toward the open end of the frame. Then, as you are installing the dock, the set screws will be on the same side towards shore or the main walkway. As you position the 16 foot pipes through the continuous bracket, it is crucial to be exactly 8 foot to the center of the continuous bracket from the end of the pipe. To be exact, you must measure, as shown here, from the end of each pipe to the straight edge of the stamping. This measurement of 94 and a half inches will guarantee you are on 8 foot center. Tighten both of the set screws on both 10 inch sleeves and double check the measurement to be sure it did not move. To position the second continuous bracket on the 16 foot framework, it is crucial again to be on 8 foot center. Extend your tape measure from the stamping on the bracket that is already in place 8 feet to the same edge of the stamping that is on the bracket you are currently installing. Also, be sure the set screws are facing back toward the open end. If the 16 foot frame pipe has a slight bow, be sure to position the pipe with the ends drooping. During the assembly of the framework on shore, you will need to install the corner brackets if you have any turns in your dock such as an L section or slip. The bent arm corner bracket is installed by placing the arm over the one and a half inch framework pipe with the open side facing in so that it clears the dock bracket set screw. As you move it over, be sure it is tight against the two inch vertical sleeve on the bracket. Then, pivot it out so that the sleeve is parallel with the dock bracket and tighten the set screw slightly. Make sure the corner bracket is not resting on the stamping that connects the two two inch pipes at a 90 degree angle. This is the solid sleeve corner bracket. Slide it on from the open end of the frame pipe. Be sure the 5 inch sleeve set screw faces inward. Measure from the outside edge of the 2 inch sleeve of the bent arm corner bracket to the outside edge of the 2 inch sleeve on the solid sleeve corner bracket. They should be set 40 inches apart from edge to edge. Tighten its set screw. This is the measurement for a standard width L section. The measurement between the corner brackets on a 5 foot, 7 foot, and 10 foot wide L section will be described. On this diagram, note, when your dock is going to have any turns or an L section, you will need to cut notches into the deck that is going to be put on the straight walkway so that it will lie level on the framework. On the side of the deck that will sit against the L section deck, measure from the end of the deck and mark 38 inches and 42 and a half inches. Using the saber saw, as shown here, cut a notch about one and a half inches deep into the deck between those marks. Also, cut a notch two and a quarter inches back from the end that will rest on top of the bent arm corner bracket. 
If the L section is 5, 7, or 10 foot wide, there will be three notches, and as you may review the dimensions of cutouts on this diagram. As previously explained, the corner brackets need to be measured from the outside edge to the outside edge, and the spacing will be 40 inches on a regular size deck L section. This diagram shows you the various dimensions based on your L section width. The bent arm corner bracket is always required on the 10 inch piece of the 2 inch pipe of the dock bracket side of the turn. The second corner bracket will be a solid sleeve or post hole that slides on and over the 1.5 inch galvanized framework pipe. The post hole corner bracket is used when a bench will be installed onto the L section or on the inside corner of the slip for the mooring line attachment. The installer shown here is measuring between a bent arm corner bracket and the post hole corner bracket. In the case of a 7 foot wide L section, the installer is shown here sliding the post hole corner bracket onto the frame pipe first then the C-channel corner bracket next. Then you will install the end bracket onto the frame pipes flush to the end bracket sleeve. Attach the bent arm corner bracket onto the end bracket. As previously described, place the arm over the one and a half inch framework pipe with the open side facing in so that as you slide it onto the two inch pipe, it clears the dock bracket set screws until it is tight against the two inch vertical sleeve on the bracket. Then tighten its set screw. Again, you'll need to make sure the corner bracket is not on the stamping. Measure from the outside edge of the bent arm corner bracket to the center of the C-channel and set it at 40 and 7 eighths inches as shown here. Position the C-channel so that it is level with the framework pipe, then tighten both set screws firmly. To set the post hole corner bracket, measure from the outside edge of the bent arm 81 and 3 quarters inches to the outside edge of the post hole as shown here. You may want to refer back to the corner bracket diagram shown earlier. The post hole sleeve for the vertical pipe must be situated on the outside because the deck will cover the inside. After leveling the corner bracket to the frame pipe, tighten its set screw. As previously explained, the last deck on the straight walkway will need to have notches cut into it if there is an L section. In the case of a 7 foot wide L section, you will need to notch the deck in these three places. At 2 and a quarter inches, between 40 and a half and 47 and 3 quarters inches, and between 81 and a half and 86 inches from the outside end of the deck. The suggested item to use when cutting the sideboard that will rest above the C-channel corner bracket is the circular saw. And be advised that you must not cut more than one and a quarter inches of the overhang on the bottom side of the deck side board. We recommend two people carry the 16 foot framework together. The starter bracket should be installed on the ground, out of the water if possible, with the intention that it will remain in that position permanently. This will provide the exact angle and location for future years installations and is easier for reinstalling the vertical pipe into the ground surface holes that do not fill in. When inserting the barrel into the specifically designed barrel brackets on the 16 foot framework, have one person push down on the open end of the frame to raise the bracket end up. This makes inserting the barrel into the clips much easier. When floating the 16 foot framework out, be sure to lift and tilt the frame up so that the middle continuous bracket does not interfere with the previously installed vertical pipe. The total weight of the 16 foot framework is approximately 124 pounds. However, you are only handling half of the weight with the barrel supporting the other half. The installer in front is kneeling down and will receive the open end of the framework from behind him. 
Then the frame pipe is slid into the starter bracket until the 1.5 inch pipe is flush inside the 2 inch pipe of the starter bracket and firmly tighten the set screws. Carefully take note here how to handle the decks. This is the recommended method to unload them and carry them to the dock location. Unload the truck or trailer by sliding two decks off at a time, but carry them one at a time using the center support on the bottom of the deck to rest the deck on your shoulder. When you are ready in place with the deck into the framework, tilt it down and set one corner of the deck into the existing deck. Then twist the deck into the framework pipe. The decks have grooves built into the bottom for sliding the deck into place on the framework. You will need to take into consideration the starting height of the dock above the water. This starting point is 26 inches above the water because the wall height here is 4 feet. High steps were needed along with an additional step and a second starter bracket. In most cases, only one starter bracket is needed, and the first set of the frame pipes will slide directly into the sleeves of the starter. Notice once again how the installers are carrying the decks. With the 16-foot frame, you will install two decks before inserting, pounding, and securing the vertical pipes. All of the decks are universal. Because they are made the same way, it does not make a difference which end you slide on first, except for the decks that will have been notched for a certain location on the dock. In most cases, the vertical pipe will be the same length on both sides of the same section. To install the vertical pipe straight, you should be standing in the middle of the frame. Watch the end of the deck to see if it is tilted, then stand accordingly to correct the tilt, then drop the pipe. The vertical pipe are driven into the ground with our 19-pound sleeve hammer. The vertical pipe lengths are programmed by Waterfront Specialties, Inc. for you based on the depth and type of ground condition. The objective is for all of the vertical pipe to be consistently set at a height of 32 inches above the dock. However, ground hardness variation may cause the pipe to vary in height. The leveling jack is used to raise the existing section by placing the hook of the jack underneath the frame pipe and tightening the 2-inch sleeve to the driven-in vertical pipe. Then push down on the straight handle of the jack. When the dock is adjusted to the desired height, Tighten the set screws to secure the vertical pipe to the bracket. We recommend that you raise or lower the dock until the bottom of the barrel bracket clip is flush with the water line. In the dock installation shown here, we are raising the first two sections slightly higher to reduce the slope of the dock. If only one person is available to carry a 16-foot frame, you will need to find the balance point approximately 21 inches in front of the center continuous bracket. Notice the installer in front will drop down as the framework will be set down approximately 20 inches past the existing frame and in between the vertical pipes. The installer uses both hands on the barrel. One hand is located on the barrel underneath the deck, and the second hand is on the top of the barrel in front of him. You can control the movement by pushing the barrel straight down out of the barrel bracket and outwards towards the next frame. Follow the same process of the other side and be careful not to leave your hand on the barrel underneath the side of the dock when releasing the barrel to avoid potential injury. Put the barrel into the next framework using our suggestion of pushing down the open end of the frame pipes to raise the bracket. As you insert the next set of frame pipes into the previously installed frame, it is important that you listen and feel that the new frame pipes have made contact with the existing frame pipes inside the sleeves. You will tighten one frame pipe in the sleeve, then as you are tightening the frame pipe on the other side, you need to hold the pipe in the sleeve as you are tightening it to ensure it is secure against the other pipe inside the sleeve. This will keep the vertical pipes on 8-foot center, which is always very important, especially when installing a boathouse. Also, keeping the frame pipes touching inside the sleeve will work as a guide to help keep the dock straight. It is still recommended that you look on both sides of the walkway to verify the dock is being installed straight. It is okay to let one side out a little to keep the 1.5 inch framework pipe in line with the last set of pipes. If you are going to install a bench onto a 7 foot wide sun deck, you will need to take into consideration that the bench will hang 18 inches back, which will interfere with the vertical post. The pipe that is going to be installed directly behind the bench 
will be 18 inches shorter in length and rises no higher than 15 inches above the deck after you have driven it in and leveled the section. Notice the installer has turned the sleeve hammer upside down to pound down the short pipe. To raise the section, you will hook the jack on the barrel clip instead of the frame. That should give you enough height, but if it doesn't, then wait until you pound the post for the bench in and then jack that post to raise that section to its desired height. Once again, be aware of the method used to handle the deck. The last deck on the straight walkway will be the deck that you will have cut notches into for the sun deck turn. We recommend two people carry the 7 foot and 10 foot wide sun deck frameworks with the bracket end over the water. The 5 foot wide platform frame uses one barrel. The 7 foot wide frame is designed to use one or two barrels. The installer shown here is using one barrel as an alternative way to install a sun deck instead of buying two barrels. Be sure to slide the sun deck framework into the sleeves of the corner brackets and make contact before tightening. Install the first deck on the outside where the barrel is situated. In this case a mud plate is needed on the outside corner vertical pipe due to questionable ground hardness and twice the deck area for pipe support. To determine where to position the mud plate on the pipe, you will need to put the vertical pipe through the sleeve and let it rest on the bottom. Evaluate the height of the post as it rests on the ground compared to the height of the posts of previous sections secured. The difference in the height is the length you will use to position the mud plate, measuring up from the bottom of the pipe. In the situation shown here, the plate will need to be positioned 20 inches up from the bottom of the pipe, then pounded in and tightened firmly. When the pipe is driven to the consistent height, the mud plate should be resting firmly on the ground for added deck support. Raise the sun deck end approximately 2 inches higher off the water than the bottom of the barrel bracket clip and tighten the set screw. This will make it easier to move the barrel to the other side. Push down on the barrel and install it into the barrel clips on the other side. Both hands need to be adequately spaced apart for control of the barrel. When the barrel is inserted into the other side of the sun deck, loosen the set screw and lower the sun deck down so the bottom of the barrel bracket is level with the water line. Then, retighten the set screw the same way as you have set the height of the other sections. It is recommended that two people install the second deck onto the sun deck. If the two deck spacing are not flush with the main walkway, you can move one side out if needed by loosening the set screw on the corner bracket and pushing out the framework pipe. Then retighten the set screw. A mud plate is needed for the post on this side of the sun deck also. Here you see two people installing the mud plate. The pipe is inserted through the sleeve and set down on the bottom. After the position of the mud plate has been determined, pull it back up for the second person to slide on the mud plate from the bottom of the pipe up, then the set screw is tightened on the plate. The second person will need to walk off of the sun deck so that the weight is the same on this side as it was on the other side as you pounded it in. Then level the deck and tighten the set screw. This way the sun deck vertical pipes will be as straight and upright as possible. As you are pounding the pipe into the ground, pulling it in will reduce the angle of the pipe. 
Level the section with the bottom of the barrel bracket clip on the water line and tighten. When removing the barrel, you will need a firm grip on both sides. Notice the vertical pipes are set at a consistent height approximately 32 inches above the deck. The installer is putting a corner bumper on for bolt protection on the front corner of the L section and straight walkway. The vertical pipe for the inside corner of the sun deck is installed by sliding it through the 2 inch sleeve on the post hole corner bracket. Take into consideration the sleeve on the corner bracket is shorter than the continuous end bracket sleeves and therefore you will need to take a look at the pipe closely to ensure it is straight before and as you are pounding it into the ground. The bench has been assembled on shore. We recommend two people install the bench. However, here you can see one of our installers slide the bench over the vertical pipes by himself. In case of a boathouse configuration, canopy standards with bumper protection such as these shown here will need to be installed on the straight walkway. Take note of the specially designed canopy standards for both ends of the boathouse. Here the installer has installed the end standard in its place. These flat bumpers are being installed facing out to the lake on the L section. The framework for the slip turn is 18 foot long, with the corner brackets installed for the turn of the slip finger. Because this is 2 feet longer than the normal framework, it is recommended that two people carry it parallel with shore. The slip that is going to be installed here will be 18 foot wide and 32 foot long. Standing on shore looking out, this will be a slip to the left. The corner brackets needed to make this turn were previously installed on the framework and the location of the turn was carefully determined to ensure the framework with the corner brackets had been installed in the correct location. Also, the second 8 foot straight walkway deck has been cut to accommodate the location of the corner brackets on the frame. It is crucial that the slip turn is at a 90 degree angle. This is verified when the first deck is set down in the slip turn frame. Where the decks meet at a 90 degree angle, there needs to be consistent spacing. If not correct, adjust the same way as the sun deck was adjusted. When you are ready to place the deck onto the framework, tilt the deck down and set one corner onto the existing deck and tilt the other corner out onto the framework pipe. The decks have grooves built into the bottom for sliding the deck into place on the framework. The 18 foot framework requires an additional 2 foot deck which has been previously cut. Notice again how to carry the deck using the center support on the bottom of the deck to rest it on your shoulder. The 2 foot deck will be set in between the two regular size 8 foot decks. Notice that the outside 8 foot deck has been notched as previously described to accommodate for the turn onto the slip finger. In most cases, the vertical pipe will be the same length on both sides of the same section. To install the vertical pipe straight, you should be standing in the middle of the frame. The vertical pipe are driven into the ground with our 19 pound sleeve hammer. 
The vertical pipe lengths are programmed for you based on the depth and ground conditions. The objective is for all of the vertical pipes to be consistently set at a height of 32 inches above the dock, although this height will vary. The leveling jack is used to raise the existing section by placing the hook of the jack underneath the frame pipe. Tighten the 2 inch sleeve set screw, then push down on the straight handle of the jack. When the deck is adjusted to the desired height, tighten the set screw to secure the vertical pipe to the bracket. We recommend that you raise or lower the dock until the bottom of the barrel bracket clip is flush with the water line. If only one person is available to carry the 16-foot frame, you will need to find the balance point approximately 21 inches in front of the center continuous bracket. The next frame is a 16-foot frame to start the slip finger. Notice how the installer sets the frame down at an angle in the direction that it will be installed. This is for ease of inserting the barrel and the positioning of the frame into the corner brackets. When installing the frame into the corner brackets, it is always crucial to push the frame pipes in all the way. Listen and feel for the steel-to-steel -steel contact inside the sleeves. This keeps the pipe on 8-foot center. Notice again how to handle the decks and slide them onto the framework. To verify the width of the slip is spaced correctly from the start to the end of the 16-foot framework, use a tape measure to measure across the slip. Measure from the inside of the one deck to the same side of the other, then move to the other end of the 16-foot frame and take the same measurement. If the measurement is not the same, loosen one set screw on the corner bracket and push it out slightly until the measurement is correct. If the measurement is a larger opening, then adjust the bent arm pipe outwards. If smaller, adjust the solid sleeve outwards. This set of pipes are being driven into the ground farther than normal to show the memory within the double strength pipe. During removal, you will see the added stress that will be put on the pipe and how it will return to a straight pipe because of its memory. Must install and secure the pair of vertical pipes that are closest to the turn first. Pound them in, level and tighten. Then install the second pair, pound them in, level and tighten. This will assist in keeping the slip width spacing consistent. You will need to keep the spacing as close as possible to the required width with a maximum of 3 inches in variance. However, 0 to 2 inches is preferred.
This installer carrying the second 16 foot frame for the slip finger is using the balance point as previously described. Notice the frame is set down with the bracket out over the water and one person is able to push the barrel out and insert it into the next frame. After the frame is floated out, you will pull the frame pipes into the continuous bracket so that they are tight against the previous frame pipes. Then he will tighten the set screws. Install the two decks, four vertical pipes, pound in, level, and tighten. It has been demonstrated within this video that one person would be able to install the system. Once again, notice the proper way to handle the decks and install both decks onto the 16-foot framework before inserting the vertical pipe. Once again, use the tape measure and make any adjustments if needed. You will need to ensure that the width of the slip is spaced correctly. To help keep the spacing correct, you should pound the first set of pipes into the ground, use the leveling jack to level the dock, and tighten the set screws firmly. Then use the same complete process on the last set of pipes on the furthest end of the slip finger. When installing the corner post inside the slip, slide it through the sleeve of the post hole corner bracket and look closely at the pipe from both directions to ensure it is straight before pounding it in. This post is used for a mooring line for the boat in the slip and as a guide for walking on the dock. Notice the installer is inserting the 88 inch canopy brace pipes in the canopy standards. You may need to turn only the end canopy standard to fit the 88 inch canopy brace pipe because the framework end bracket is not on 8 foot center. It is 7 feet 10 and a half inches. The end is recessed which makes the pipe a little too long. Bumpers are suggested for installation on every post that a boat may be moored next to. The bumper provides protection 4 foot above the dock and 2 foot below the dock to accommodate various heights of boat rub rails. The canopy bows must be assembled on level ground or on the level dock that you have just installed. Measure the actual width between the vertical posts that the canopy bow structure is going to be installed on. The width should be measured from the center of the pipe on the one side of the slip to the center of the pipe on the other side of the slip. On a standard 16 foot wide slip, this measurement should be 15 foot 10 inches. For the wider 18 foot slip, the measurement should be 17 foot 10 inches. The installer is shown here bringing two half bows and one top V onto the dock 
and the pieces are set down in the configuration that they will be assembled. Slide the top of the half bow into the bottom of the top key and measure to set the proper position and tighten the set screw. You will measure from the top of the slap bracket on the half bow to the bottom of the slap bracket on the top key as shown here. On a 16 foot wide boathouse you will set the measurement at 21 inches. On an 18 foot wide boathouse set the measurement at 13 and 3 quarters inches. After assembling the canopy bow, measure the width to ensure it is consistent with the slip width you had previously measured from pipe to pipe. With the measurements of 15 foot 9 and a half inches on 16 foot wide slip, or 17 foot 9 and a half inches on a wider 18 foot wide slip. The canopy bow on the end of the slip will be installed first. Slide the bow into the canopy standard on the side of the slip walkway that will be covered first. Then slide the other side of the bow in. You may need to use your body to lean or pull against the canopy standard while pushing or pulling the bow into the standard. If there is a difference of more than three inches, remove the bow and readjust it. One person would be able to install the canopy bows by carrying it in the center over your head, inserting the first side, then swing the bow across to insert the other side. The framework has adequate support to handle the total weight of the bow until it is installed on the other side. Notice the simple process of two people inserting the canopy bow. At all times while installing the canopy bows into the standards, keep your hands above the slap bracket to avoid potential injury of pinching your hand. The one and a quarter inch galvanized steel slats can be installed from the slip turn walkway by putting the end up between the bows. Slide it above the slap bracket of the second bow, then push it to overlap the third bow in the middle where the joint is located. The installer is shown here carrying six of the 16 foot steel slats on his right shoulder while walking under the covered walkway. The slats are set down on the deck and are leaned up on the second to the last bow from the lake end. Then notice how he pushes the slats up and over the last bow, resting them carefully above the slat brackets. When you install the slats into the slat brackets, position the end of the slat into the slat bracket of the middle canopy bow first. The end of the slat will be tightened in the center of the slat bracket. The end of the other slat will be installed from the other direction will be positioned and tightened into the other half of that same slat bracket in the middle bow. Tighten the slat into the bracket of the next canopy bow. And last, tighten the slat into the bracket on the end canopy bow. Repeat the process for the next five slats while you are standing under the covered walkway. Be aware of the end of the bow to make sure that the amount of slat that is hanging over the end is the same distance from each slat from the bottom slat all the way to the top slat. Note the steel slats should be set to the center of the slat bracket and tighten the 5 16 inch set screw snug. Do not over tighten as this will cause caving in the steel slat. On the side of the uncovered walkway, you will install the steel slats starting with the lowest one in the canopy standard first and going up one at a time. Position the end of the 16 foot steel slat into the center of the slat bracket on the middle canopy bow and secure that end first. This is the slat bracket where the two slats meet in the middle. Tighten the set screws on the slats in the slat brackets from the center of the boathouse first. Be sure to tighten all of the set screws of the slats of the bottom three slats before you climb on them. As you are climbing up to insert the other slats, you'll be standing on steel slats. It is important for your safety that you stand with your foot pressure straight down on the slat and do not push outwards or the slat might pop out. Install the slats all the way up and the two slats over the top of the crown, tightening the set screws in the middle of the canopy bow first. On the second bow out and from the slip turn, you will only tighten the set screws on the first three slats up to the first bend of the bow. The fourth canopy bow is located eight foot from the end of the boathouse. Use the same process for climbing and tightening all of the set screws on the first canopy bow closest to the slip turn. If the end bow and middle bow are straight, the slat should fill the slat bracket completely. The slats over the crown, which are on the slip finger side of the boathouse, may hang three quarters of an inch over due to both ends are recessed. Not eight foot center to center on the ends, but eight foot center to eight foot from end to outside of end canopy bow. Use the same process for climbing the slats and tightening all the set screws in the last canopy bow on lakeside end of the boathouse. For tightening set screws on the covered walkway side of the boathouse, notice the installer is standing on the outside end vertical post to reach above and as far as possible toward the top of the boathouse. 
You will tighten all of the set screws in the slat brackets with the exception of the slats that are out of reach. Three slats on the second and fourth canopy bows located eight feet out from the slip turn and eight feet in from the end of the boathouse. The boathouse vinyl has been folded and then tightly rolled so that it can be rolled over the middle bow where the two slats meet in the middle. Place the folded vinyl on the third slat up, then start to unroll it. As you unroll it up the boathouse and over the top, be aware the vinyl needs to be pulled down within approximately 10 inches of the canopy brace pipes. When you reach the top, position yourself carefully so that you can throw the excess over the covered walkway side. With one person on each side of the boathouse, pull the vinyl to the end bow on one end, then pull it to the other. Start tying the canopy rope on either end. If the wind is blowing, it is easiest to start tying on the end where the direction of the wind is coming from. Start at the top center of the crown with the canopy rope that has been pre-cut to the appropriate length. Loop in the center and work down both ways pulling semi-tight. With loop in hand, go around the pipe and place the open end through the loop to have two separate strands, one to go each way. One will go under and around the pipe and through the grommet. Repeat all the way to the bottom. Start second strand, you can reach it from the covered side. Do not pull the vinyl too close to the bow, or it may get caught on the end of the slat while tightening the opposite end. If it does get caught, you'll need to climb back up the other end bow and loosen the rope. Tighten and draw the rope down to the corner by tying it so it pulls downward and outward. Go around the vertical pipe, then under the 88-inch canopy brace pipe, then back through the grommet then back under the 88 inch canopy brace pipe. Back to the grommet and tie off pulling tight all the time. You will need to tie all four corners using the same process. We recommend tying a small knot in the center of the rope and start stringing it from the middle two loops at a time. String it out towards each end then tighten from the center out. Go under the 88 inch pipe, through the grommet, under the 88 inch pipe, through the grommet and repeat halfway. Then go back to the middle and go the other way tie off at the ends. The safety caps need to be twisted onto the pipe because they are designed for a snug fit. Decide where you want to position your ladder and use the ladder brace to determine where the holes are going to be drilled in the deck for the bolts to slide through the ladder, through the deck and through the brace underneath. To determine where to drill the holes, be aware that the ladder brace is inserted under the framework with one end of the brace being flush with the outside of the frame pipe. It is important for the ladder brace to make contact underneath the frame on both sides. The brace will provide support when using the ladder. Set the brace in the location across the deck where it will be underneath. Line up the holes in the flat piece of the ladder that is resting on the deck with where the holes of the brace are. Mark the position of the holes in the flat piece of the ladder. This is where you will drill the holes. Insert the 5 16 by 6 1⁄2 inch hex bolts through the ladder, deck, and brace, then tighten the 5 16 inch hex nut semi-tight.
not over tighten because it might distort the shape of the top deck. Start removing the canopy rope at the end of the open walkway, climbing up the bow as you remove. On the side of the covered walkway, remove the rope as far as you can reach. The rest can be removed from above. Remove the side ropes. Loosen the slat set screws, pop the slats out of the bracket, and put the slats above the slat bracket. As you remove the canopy rope from both ends, fold 6 inches of the end of the vinyl over the top. This will stop the grommet from getting caught in the slat to reduce damage to the vinyl. Remove the vinyl by pulling it down, as the installers are doing here, so that it falls into a neat pile for easier carrying. Pull the vinyl off evenly on both ends to avoid complications. It is best to remove the vinyl when there is no condensation on the vinyl, dock, or area where it is going to be folded to avoid mold and other concerns as it is stored during the off-season. With the top side of the vinyl facing up, spread out the vinyl. Find the over the crown with one person on each side. Kneel down in the middle of the vinyl and place one hand in the center, the other hand about three feet away. Hold one hand still over the other hand, pulling tight. Repeat until the vinyl is half folded. Repeat for the other half until you have the neat strip of vinyl three feet wide and the same length as the over the crown length. Roll the vinyl as tight as you can get it. After you have removed the vinyl, you will take off the safety caps. This way the vinyl will not catch on the vertical pipe as it is being removed. Pull the safety caps off by using the edge of your socket wrench and forcing the cap up for the easiest and safest way. Store the safety caps in a plastic bag. Remove the slats from the top working down. First remove the two over the crown on the covered walkway side, then proceed down the side you came up. The slats should be in piles of no more than six of the 16 foot slats. When reaching the vertical slats, Stand with your weight pushing in on the slats. For your own safety, do not push outward as this could cause the slats to slip out. Notice the installer here is carrying six slats under the covered walkway by pulling the slats down onto his shoulder. Avoid bending over to lift the slats. The total weight of six slats is 90 pounds. The slats should be placed inside the bench on shore to keep the slats off the ground and clean. Here you can see a demonstration of removing the canopy bow with two people carrying and controlling the bow so that it does not tip over. When lifting the bow out of the canopy standards, keep your hand above the slap bracket to avoid potential severe pinching of the hand. Loosen all four set screws and remove the 88 inch brace pipes and canopy standards. When loosening the 88 inch brace pipes, it is best to also loosen the bumpers to save time and bending over. Remove the 88 inch canopy brace pipes by sliding out of the 2 inch sleeve on the canopy standard. Loosen the bumpers and canopy standards. Then they are easily lifted off the vertical pipe. All bumpers, standards, and accessories should be removed before starting to remove any of the vertical pipe. To insert the barrel into the barrel bracket clips on a day when the water elevation is similar to the day of install, you will need to force the barrel under. When the barrel prong is against the clip, push down with control to insert the prong into the clip and do the same on the opposite side. The first thing you will do before removing the vertical pipe is loosen the set screws to release the vertical pipe from the framework. 
Be sure you take into consideration how much of the dock framework is intended to be floating on the barrel upon the removal of the vertical pipe. If removing an 8-foot frame, only loosen the end bracket set screws. If the water elevation is dropped, one to two more sections can be loosened at this time. If a 16-foot frame is going to be removed, two sections can be loosened. Make sure you can still get the barrel in the next dock bracket. It is vitally important the frame where the vertical pipe is being removed to be free-floating, not binding. Failure to do so could require the framework to bind even greater, causing the brackets to bend during removal. It is very important to use an 18-inch pipe wrench to twist the pipe to reduce the suction that builds during the summer. This step is crucial when the lake bottom is clay ground conditions. After twisting the pipes, starting on the end of the dock and working your way back, choose the one of the two pipes on each section that was the most difficult to turn and remove it first using your removal jack. Notice how the jaw of the removal jack grabs the vertical pipe. After your jack and stand are set up, push down on the handle at least four times. If the pipe does not release after seven attempts, it has most likely been driven into the ground too far. Move the jack across and remove the post on the other side to provide framework support for removal of the difficult post. If this procedure is not followed, you may be using extra time to remove the two pipes in this bracket. Be aware of the water that is trapped inside the vertical pipes. Drain the water into the lake, and not on the decks, to keep your clothes dry and eliminate the possibility of ice inside the pipe which may cause splitting during winter storage. The memory and tensile strength of the framework pipe, along with the design and strength of the bracket, allow you to use all 490 pounds of barrel supports when trying to break the suction from tough ground conditions. Remember to lay the pipe on shore in a pile so that the first pipe you pull out is the last pipe you will need in the spring, keeping them flush on the end to keep the pile neat. The slip should have one pile and the straight dock and L-section pipe should be in a separate pile. The high tensile strength pipe allows a large amount of flex when forcing pressure on the middle of the frame 8 feet back from the barrel support. After pushing down on the removal jack multiple times, pull back on the pipe to bind it so it does not pop up between resetting for another push. When removing the first deck of the 16-foot framework, pull it back completely onto the next deck. This procedure allows more control when lifting it onto your shoulder. Remove the second deck by pulling it back and standing it straight up. Then walk one corner up onto the next deck and pivot the deck back at a 45 degree angle to lift it onto your shoulder. Install the barrel to remove the 7 foot wide sun deck section while maintaining control of the barrel as you position it underneath the dock and push down to install it into the barrel bracket clips. If only one person is removing the bench, you will need to first pull the inside corner post with a removal jack, then lift it over the outside post. Two installers are removing the bench as shown here. Remember to loosen the set screws of the bench before attempting to remove it. One person is able to carry the bench. Fully assembled, it weighs approximately 80 pounds. When using only one barrel, you must only loosen one vertical pipe at a time, starting with the pipe closest to the side the barrel is located and removing the pipe and deck on that side first. In this situation, when removing the second vertical pipe, we are showing the two-person process because this pipe has a mud plate. Try to keep the body weight of the person that is lying on the deck as far back onto the frame as possible to maximize the flotation of the barrel. Remove the decks from the sun deck frame using the same procedure as removing the other decks on the dock.
When removing the sun deck framework with one barrel, be sure to have a firm grip on the framework as you pull it out of the corner brackets. It is not equally balanced. Pulling up on the 8 foot pipe without the barrel will help control the frame. One side of the frame is not supported which could cause it to flip over. The sun deck framework weighs approximately 110 pounds. It is possible for one person to carry this frame by finding the balance point. It must be carried from the center C channel only. For a person who is not able to carry the deck alone on his shoulder, we have built-in handles on the bottom side, one in the center, and two located at both ends of the deck. While lifting the framework with your arms raised full above your head and pulling it back, you will need to offset it to one side to avoid hitting the vertical pipes that are in place on the remaining sections installed. Failure to raise it high enough could cause hand injury with contact to the vertical pipe. If one person is carrying the 16-foot framework, you will need to find the balance point approximately 26 inches off the center. Pick the frame up and carry it over the head of the second person to avoid injury from contact of the bracket or vertical pipe sleeve. Again take note of the proper way to insert the barrel into the clips. Use both hands for control when forcing the barrel down into the water by rolling it under the dock. Then use both hands on either end, one under the dock and the other outside, spaced apart for control to push down and pop into the barrel bracket. Do the same for the other side, allowing the barrel prongs on each end to rest against the barrel bracket clips. At shore where the angle of slope is greater due to starting point height being higher than the 19.5 inch standard dock height above the water, all four of the vertical pipe set screws must be loosened at once. Our recommendation is to pull the last 32 feet at one time. First pull the pipes on the end and the deck, then the third set of pipes and deck, then the second set of pipes and deck, then the first set of pipes and deck. Then pull the 32 foot frame all at one time. It is twice the weight but it is much easier than fighting the angle when removing the last 16 foot frame. If you choose not to pull the last 32 foot frame at one time, then it would be best to pull the vertical pipes out of the two sections closer to shore first to minimize the stress on the framework due to the binding from the slope angle. Notice the jaw of the removal jack and how it grabs the pipe. Once again, ensure that you have drained all the water out of the pipes. In most cases, the pipes pull out easier at shore. If the post is not coming out of the ground easily, you can jump slightly or shake it to help break the suction. One person carrying the decks to another angle. When removing the starting deck, if there is a situation where steps are resting on the deck, you will need to walk out onto the frame that is without a deck to pull the first deck out from under the steps. The underside of the deck is designated with 11 inverted slots. These slots provide many options for lifting the deck. When removing the steel framework out of the starter bracket, it may be necessary to stand out on the frame pipes and shift it back and forth due to its binding from the starter bracket angle for easier release.
As shown here, you might have to make adjustment to your grip due to the angle of the framework before carrying the framework to shore. Both hands must be at 21 inches forward of the center dock bracket to the exact spot on framework for better control when carrying framework by yourself. The complete dock is stored in contained stacks and uses very little grass area. A straight dock is stacked with one pile of pipe flush on one end and one pile of decks. A slip configuration should be stacked with two piles of pipes and two piles of decks. A boathouse should be stacked with two piles of pipes and one stack of decks, 25 decks high. Stack the slats inside of the bench and bows in their own pile. Make one stack of bumpers, standards, and 88-inch pipe making sure not to confuse the 88-inch canopy brace pipe with the vertical pipe. You may need to have more than one stack of frames. They are to be stacked only seven frames high with one on top of the other. The socket size needed for dock and boathouse accessories is half inch eight point for a 3 8 inch drive wrench. This size may not be easily found in your local hardware store. The socket size needed for the boathouse slats is a 5 16 inch 8 point socket for a 3 8 inch drive. 